Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. The review for today will be on the PNSO Prehistoric Animal Models Tuxin the Himalayasaurus. Now this is an exciting release since it's one of the very few figures of a large ichthyosaur species. The only other ones that come to mind is the Schleich Shonisaurus and the Collecte Temnodonosaurus. Whenever we get ichthyosaur figures, it's usually a smaller species like Ophthalmosaurus or Ichthyosaurus itself. Let's quickly go over the box first before we take a look at the model. And as you can see, there's nothing new. Hopefully in the future, PNSO can do something new with these boxes. First, let's take a look at this amazing and ominous artwork of Tuxin preying on a Simbo Spondylus. Hopefully this indicates that we're getting a Simbo Spondylus in the future. I'm only going to go over a few pages in the booklet since the rest are just filled with images that we've seen plenty of times. So here, basically Tuxin is telling his own story about life in the Triassic Oceans. Right here is a skeletal reconstruction. The next page is an artwork. And then, we just have a smaller version of that poster. We're going to take a look at the detailing first, as always. So based on a study on the smaller ichthyosaur genus, Stenopterygius, showed that it was warm-blooded, had blubber, and smooth skin. So presumably, the same could be said for all ichthyosaurs. Because of the smooth skin feature, there really isn't a whole lot the sculptor can do with detailing, aside from the musculature going down from the body to the, to the tail. And Himalayasaurus was a more basal ichthyosaur, and the sculptor got the basal features correct, such as the smaller dorsal fin and caudal fins. I also like the pose on this. You can see, it's a very gradual streamlike body. It's not like some mosasaur figures, where like the torso is just un unusually wide, and then it just drastically transitions into a very thin tail. So let's take a look at the head sculpt. You can see it looks very dolphin-like, and there's plenty of wrinkles, especially around the eye and the neck area. The Helicoprian Chronosaurus and Liviaton also has this feature, and it kind of makes the animal look more elderly, but it's really not an issue to me. And you can see the teeth are sticking out, specifically the ones on the top jaw, which is strange since the poster showed Tuxin with lips. I'm one of those people who think that um, most of these prehistoric reptiles had lips. Now let's dive into the coloration. The underbelly is a light green color, the eye is orange with a black pupil, and the dorsal colors are silver. I do like it, but it's not as exciting as the more contrasting color schemes of some of PNSO's other prehistoric marine creatures. Silver is a pretty bright color just like the underbelly, but the best part about the paint job hands down is the beautiful sparkles which is also present on PNSO's helicoprian, and the sparkles is not just on the top, but on the bottom as well. Unfortunately though, it's not as apparent on camera. Starting off with our comparisons, here is the PNSO Mini Himalayasaurus, which uses the Shonisaurus body reconstruction. I like how they decided to use one reconstruction for the mini figure and another for the larger figure. Next, here is another one of PNSO's Ichthyosaurus, Levi the Uranosaurus, and I definitely will get the large vinyl Ophthalmosaurus in the future. Next, here is Paul Wynn the Dacosaurus, and Zewile the Adobo Dentatus. Next up, we have the Museum Series Ron the Mosasaurus and Jeff the Chronosaurus. In front of us, we have Tuxin next to Rayquena the Liviaton and Evan the Tylosaurus. Next for comparison, we have PNSO's two Megalodon figures. Here is the Cretoxyrhina, Helicoprian, and Dunkelosteus from PNSO. Next, we have four other Ichthyosaur models. Of course, we gotta bring out the Collecte Xyphactinus and the Collecte Mini Xyphactinus. So that's about it for my review of PNSO's Tuxin the Himalayasaurus. This is yet another strong release from PNSO. You can't go wrong with the beautiful sparkly colors and that good size. Also, this is one of the very few models of a large Ichthyosaur genus. Hopefully in the future, we can get Temnodontosaurus or Shonisaurus. So if I had to give this guy a rating, I would say he gets the 9.5 out of 10. There's just something about him that isn't as exciting as, say, Evan the Tylosaurus or Aiden the Cretoxyrhina, but I still highly recommend this. So if you guys enjoyed this review, hit that like and subscribe button, and let me know in the comment section of what you think of Tuxin.